Oh, oh no. Ah. Oh. Oh, I've, I've done nicked it. The goof went so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Good day you lovely lot, it's Jacob here with PC Games N. Today we're going to be delving into the hot new interconnect standard on the scene, PCIe 4.0, which was first introduced into the desktop market with AMD Ryzen 3000 CPUs. PCIe, or Peripheral Component Interconnect Express as it's officially known, has been around in various forms for over a decade and a half, helping PC builders make quick work of add-in cards of all shapes and sizes. For the better part of the 2010s, most client computers have been reliant on the PCIe 3.0 standard, capable of 8 giga transfers a second. But with AMD Ryzen 3000 and the X570 chipset combo, AMD is spearheading the introduction of PCIe 4.0. This new spec doubles the bandwidth of its predecessor, and there are already a handful of SSDs on the market raring to go from the likes of Corsair, Gigabyte, A-Data, and many more. But in the wake of this technological advancement, we here at PC Games N started thinking, does PCI 4.0 make any difference to game load times? <laughs> to answer that question, we've set up our test bench with all the necessary gubbins from AMD that are fit for PCI 4.0. First up, the MSI MEG X570 ACE, one of the most capable X570 motherboards going. We'll be using the Corsair Force MP600 Gen 4 PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD, and the Samsung 970 EVO for this test. Both drives are 2TB, with the 970 EVO representing one of the best PCIe 3.0 drives going for gamers, and the Corsair bringing Fizon's initial PCIe 4.0 controller to the scene. The MP600 theoretically maxes out around 4950 megabytes per second sequential read and 4250 megabytes per second sequential write. Meanwhile, the 970 Evo is rated up to 3500 megabytes sequential read and 2500 sequential write. So you can kind of see what we're working with in terms of performance disparity between these generations of PCIe. Also in the rig, we'll have the Ryzen 7 3700X, which is pivotal in unlocking all that bandwidth across the platform. And to round it off, we've got the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z Royal memory at 3600 MHz, and a Corsair H100i V2. With our rig up and running, we installed a couple of major AAA games across both SSDs. We picked games the user is likely to play consistently over the span of many months, which could see load times amount to a considerable waste of time. And one which is famed for its loading screens is... any guesses? Yep, we've gone for Anthem, a game known far and wide for its rather extreme use of loading screens. Credit where credit's due, it seems to have massively improved since launch, but the loading screens are still present, and they can be real nasty. Joining it will be Destiny 2 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and we'll be opting for a healthy mix between game load and world load benchmarks. So let's get to it! So I've been shit hot on my stopwatch across our benchmarking suite, and now I've got some results to share with you. Starting in Destiny 2, we timed how long it takes between smashing the enter key on the game title after a fresh restart to getting to a full character load on the character selection screen. For the record, our system is running on the beta chipset driver released by AMD to fix the Destiny 2 no-boot issue present at Ryzen 3000's launch. This will be addressed in a full Agesa update at a later date, but for the time being, this was the only option to get ourselves in the game. Anyways, across three runs, the Samsung 970 EVO took 22.61 seconds on average to reach the character screen. The Corsair MP600, on the other hand, took 22.63 seconds to reach that same point. Ostensibly, both SSDs were evenly matched here, and well within the variance we might expect from me, a 27-year-old human, pressing stop on a timer. Anyway, let's move on to our second Destiny 2 test. This one measures the time it takes for the game to load up one environment from another. We initially ran this test from the tower, but the time it takes for Destiny to find an instance can vary pretty massively. But hey, at least in this test we see the MP600 take the lead ever so slightly at 30.89 seconds to the 970 EVO's 31.67 seconds. Science. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we also saw the PCIe 4.0 drive take the lead, but again by a tiny margin. Our first test was from game load to title when the press any keyword appear. 
In this test, we saw the MP600 scoot in just a couple of tenths of a second before the 970 Evo at 54.94 to 55.10. Our second test was to load into the game's prescribed benchmark. The MP600 manages to do this in 19.67 seconds, while the 970 Evo is basically a slug in comparison at 20.2 seconds. I'm just kidding, there's almost no difference whatsoever. Next test, it's Anthem time. Our first test is from this title screen to Fort Tarsus on a fresh boot. The 970 Evo managed to get this done in 22.2 seconds, while the MP600 was slower at 23.54 seconds. Moving on, our second test was to jump into the Academy Ruins from Fort Tarsus. In this test, the MP600 system managed to get the job done in 48.87 seconds, breezy, while the 970 Evo does so in 49.6 seconds. And so we find that there's very little time to be saved in loading screens with a PCIe 4.0 SSD. But that's far from the end of the story. The Corsair MP600 vastly outperforms the Samsung when it comes to synthetic measures of performance. In ASSSD and Atto, two synthetic benchmarking tools for raw SSD speed, we see the MP600 pushing upwards of 4000 megabytes a second across the board. It's not quite hitting its rated speeds in either test for us, but write speeds of 3900 megabytes per second are mighty impressive. Sure, that doesn't exactly count for much, but it just shows that there is a tangible benefit to the new spec and controller. It's just harnessing that in-game that's the trouble. Games just aren't built to make the most of PCIe 4.0 bandwidth yet. After all, these speedy drives aren't exactly commonplace in gamers' rigs. Graphics cards similarly don't get close to maxing out that bandwidth outside of compute tasks. Yet with the next-gen PlayStation and Project Scarlet bringing SSD to the mainstream for console game development, and the abundance of cheap SSDs in the PC market growing by the day, we may soon see a drastic reduction in loading times. And there's another potential positive on the way for PCIe 4.0 platforms. No, it's not the PCIe 5.0 standard, although that will once again bump all the performance twofold, it's better PCIe 4.0 controllers. So far, we've only seen Fizon get a PCIe 4.0 controller out to market, the PS5016E16. Even Fizon admits that's far from the best kit it can produce, and it plans on releasing a 6500 megabyte per second controller in Q1 2019. Not to mention we'll see every other manufacturer in the game, including champ Samsung, throwing their hat in the ring in the meantime. And last but not least, the remaining components in your rig also have a huge impact on loading times, including your CPU. An upgrade from an entry-level chip to an enthusiast-grade processor will keep you from waiting around too long for things to load. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our dive into PCIe 4.0 and how it might affect us gamers. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, send us a postcard, lend us your jacket when we're cold, and tuck us in at night. That would be lovely. Also, if you want more, you'll find us typing away over at PCGamesN.com. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.